Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Thursday of the first week of Lent. We're in our beautiful Church of St. Mary here in historic Schweinsville. So happy to be with you this afternoon for this Lenten reflection. I'm going to begin a series on the Stations of the Cross by St. Alphonsus Liguori. And what I'm going to be doing is a station a day. Now, sometimes uh, it might not all go in the order of the stations. I have to stop and maybe I'll do a reflection, maybe because there's a big event, like a feast day, like St. Catherine Drexel next Wednesday, or the Sunday when we're celebrating the second Sunday of Lent. I would like to talk about that gospel. So we are going to be doing a series of the Stations of the Cross, but there, they might be interrupted by a feast or a Sunday that has importance, okay? Again, we're meditating upon the way of the cross by St. Alphonsus Liguori. And as you can see in our beautiful church, isn't that a beautiful crucifix of our Lord? How beautiful that crucifix is. I remember when I first came to St. Mary's, uh, before my assignment began. My assignment began July 1st, 2013, but I came a week early just to talk to Father McElroy and uh, meet the staff, you know what I mean? And I remember Father showing me the church, and I was just struck by the beauty of the crucifix and the blonde wood and the marble background of our church there where the crucifix really is placed upon that marble piece right behind the main altar right above and behind the tabernacle beautiful absolutely beautiful and i when i say beautiful a crucifixion as we we will learn is nothing but uh, misery and agony and pain, but we also call Good Friday good. So when I say beautiful, how beautiful it is that Christ surrendered so that we may live. Surrendered, took upon himself the sins of the world, surrendered to the will of the Father so that the gates of heaven might be opened and that you and I may have redemption and salvation because of the crucifixion, the cross, death, Christ's death upon the cross, right? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. My Lord Jesus Christ, you have made this journey to die for me with love unutterable. And I have so many times unworthily abandoned you. But now I love you with my whole heart. And because I love you, I repent sincerely for ever having offended you. Pardon me, my God. And permit me to accompany you on this journey. You go to die for love of me. I wish also my beloved Redeemer to die for love of you. My Jesus, I will live and die always united to you. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus, after having been scourged and crowned with thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. Scourged and crowned with thorns. A horrible, horrible way to die. And this is what they did to Jesus. They scourged him. The scourging happened with a whip. 
that had ends attached to it, pointy ends, that when they whipped him, flesh came with it. So they whipped him and it made a puncture in the skin. And when they pulled the whip back, they ripped his skin. So on the ground was skin and blood. I want to take you to the statue of the scourge. So when you see the scourging of Jesus and how horrific this is, you see that the skin and the blood was there. The statue is very graphic. I'm not going to take the cape off, but I think you get the point of what a scourging is and how the point of the whip removed the flesh. And you could even see down here, Susan, right? On the ground where they whipped him, the skin and the blood. So sad. You see these words, ecce homo. These two Latin words, which means behold the man. Behold the man, Christ. The crowning of thorns placed upon the head of Jesus. Do you know that they were poisonous thickets or thorns? That when they placed it on the head of Jesus, it it was placed on the crown of the head, like it is to me. And they punctured the crown down because they wanted the poison to go into our Lord. And so it began to ooze with pus. It made him very, uh, can I say, delirious a little bit? little blurred in vision. And then he went before Pilate. So all of this happened before the first station. You would think that's enough, right? This was done before the first station where Jesus is condemned to death as he meets Pilate for the sentence. Let's go back into church. Jesus is condemned to death. He's be brought before Pilate somewhere around nine in the morning. I say that nine in the morning because he's at the top of Calvary at noon. And then he dies at three. So you could get in your mind nine o'clock. He's before Pontius Pilate. Twelve noon. He's on the top of Calvary. And three o'clock, he dies. And remember, they have to have this done before four, because they can't work. What has to be done? Well, the taking down of the body and the burial. Thank God the burial was very close to the crucifixion. Remember? Jesus is in the grave of, not his own grave, but Joseph 
of Arimathea. So Jesus is condemned to death. Pilate says, who do you want me to release? Barabbas or Jesus? And they said, release Barabbas. What do you want me to do with Jesus, the so-called Messiah? Crucify him. Crucify him. Why? What has this man done? Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate then washes his hands. And he says, I wash my hands of the innocence of the blood of this just man. You crucify him yourself. Pilate knew that Jesus did not do anything. He was the lawful governor. He had to come in, by the way, from, he didn't live in Jerusalem in the city. He was like, he lived in the suburbs. He was the governor. He came into town for that. You crucify him. I'm staying out of this. I'm washing my hands of the blood of this just man. It's not on me, it's on you. He thought to himself, I have to say that because if I don't have them crucify him, they're going to run me out of town. But sometimes we have to do what is right. What Pilate did was put it in their hands. He didn't insist that this man was just. We're not going to do it. He gave the sentence to what the people wanted. But when we know what is right, we should not give in. So what does this station teach us? That's the most important question. This station teaches us about when our words or our actions condemn somebody. So we all know what happened prior to the first station, the scourging and the crown of thorns, then placing our Lord before Pontius Pilate, and then the sentence came of condemnation. He's condemned now to death. Not because that's what the governor wanted, but that's what the people wanted the governor to do. In societies, in public life, people would want certain things, but I think all people of government need to follow the law of God. That's how it's all based upon. That's all falling away now, the law of God. You know, the Ten Commandments used to be outside of courthouses. <laughs> it's not anymore. Because law got its origin from the law of God, Mount Sinai, Moses. When God gave Moses the law, the Ten Commandments. We don't have that anymore. People don't even know what the Ten Commandments are. If I were to ask a number of people, can you please tell me the Ten Commandments? They will not be able to answer me. That's why I sang them to you. I sang you the Ten Commandments because it gives us a base of what the law of God is.
So right now I'm going to recite them. The first commandment, I am the Lord your God, you should not have strange gods before me. Two, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Three, remember to keep holy the Sabbath. Four, honor your father and mother. Five, thou shalt not kill. Six, thou shalt not commit adultery. Seven, thou shalt not steal. Eight, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Nine, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife or husband. Ten, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's goods. The law of God. We need to defend the law of God, to respect it, to know it, and to live it. To condemn somebody is not for us to do, but we need to understand in a perfect way that our words can condemn people. God is the judge. He alone. We try to move people in right living. We might need to say that that's against God and his commandments, but we don't condemn. But our words can condemn sometimes. We need to uplift people and direct them to the right way. See, Jesus was unjustly condemned. Unjustly condemned. He's an innocent man but was led like a lamb to the slaughter. See, this is again the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, the Lamb led to the slaughter. He is the sacrificial animal, right? On the altar of the cross. In the Old Testament, the priests used to slaughter animals as a holocaust, a sin offering, an oblation for the sin. Jesus does it once and for all as he is slaughtered on the cross for our sins. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world Let's read this again. Consider how Jesus, after having been scourged and crowned with thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. I could only imagine Jesus being God the king of the world stands before a political leader and is condemned unjustly by him. May our words and actions not condemn people, but move people to right living by following the law of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we meditate upon these 14 stations, may you and I
continually gravitate toward him, walk with him, and understand everything that he did was for our benefit, our salvation. Have a blessed day, everybody.